Okay, so I think we are live here. I'm trying to figure out how to share this link. There we go. This is just going to be a quick video um, of what I do with the pass through slot and how I make big words. I don't. This is is this isn't going to be an in depth step by step. It's just a really quick tutorial. So right now I'm just in the process of getting this posted up onto the Facebook page so you guys can follow along if you want. There's probably a better way to do this. Than what I'm doing, but it is what it is. So if you have questions, definitely feel free to put it in the comments or message or me or um, message on the the Facebook post here. Um, Today has been very full of chores. So I'm running a little low here, but Someday I'll get this all figured out. Okay, so we have, I'm gonna go put myself somewhere over there. We have this really large word cut out. I'll zoom out. This is Mary. It was one that I did before Christmas that someone locally had asked, hey, can you do this? And so I was like, yeah, I could do that. And they wanted to know how much it would be and stuff and what it would look like and all that. So. I decided to stop what I was doing and make one um, just because I was like that's a cool fun challenge and I'm kind of tired of what I'm doing um, so I did it's 55 uh, inches long and 18.9 inches wide and it's broken into several different pieces so you can see here that this piece is its own distinct section so there's one, two, three, four, five, and then six, this little tail here. If I had actually been planning it out appropriately, then I could have avoided, probably could have avoided having that little tail, but it is what it is. Um, the process definitely wasn't perfect, and there was one or two sections where it didn't line up all the way, and so I just did a little sanding on it. Um, but I was in a hurry, not really focusing so much on the project. I just wanted to get it done. And um, to provide an, an example to them of what it is possible to do. So we're in outline mode right now. If I switch over, and then this is in Inkscape, if I switch over to normal mode, you can see that it looks a little funny. And there are all of these shadow shapes here. That's because these are not closed uh, nodes basically and they don't need to be because we're cutting if I was going to be engraving this as well as cutting then I would go through and fix those and close the shapes and um, it'd be a little bit harder to line up because you're trying to connect an engrave to an engrave and that's uh, as far as I understand one of the things that Glowforge is working on for what they want to, where they want to go, and that's where I want to go too, is being able to engrave long sheets of of material and not be able to tell that there was a break in that engrave. So I'm gonna, I'm trying to 
pay attention to the chat box over here. I've got an error that's popping up on my screen that says don't use this. So apparently the keyframe rate isn't working very well and I have no idea how to fix that. So hopefully this is working and I'm not just talking to myself. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, so this file is broken up into sections and then I loaded it over into the Glowforge user interface. So I will bring that over here. Here is that. And in the user interface, you can see that that came in and there's multiple sections now here on the right hand side. So if I zoom in, you can see that it's been broken out into its respective pieces. You can make sure that it's following the correct order of your pieces by going through and putting it into the colors of the that the Glowforge recognizes in their order. And on the um, Glowforge forum, there's a, a list of all of the codes and what order the Glowforge is programmed in. And so for Inkscape, we have um, these color palettes that my husband spent time programming. And so I can flip between the color palettes to know what order the colors are supposed to be in. Um, so I've got this Glowforge and then Massive and then this other one. So. <coughs> On the Glowforge side then, in the user interface, you load in your wood, you then choose to which side of the crumb tray you're going to line your wood up against. And so um, in this case, the the wood's actually lined up over on the right, but the file's on the left, or left but on right. Anyway, so don't pay attention to all of this because this is kind of just an example. But so I would try to then make sure that my design is more closely aligned to whichever side that I'm going to be using, assuming that you know it, it has the space to do that. So for like Mary, I can't actually do that because Y is going to be the one that needs to be over. And so just paying attention to where you're putting your design and the length of the design is super important and that it will fit all the way through. So if I go down here, and I double check, I'm just gonna turn it on. If I grab it and I move it all the way up, we'll do this faster. And I'll explain all of the keystrokes that I'm doing here in just a moment. So I'm moving all my Y up. Moving on up. So I would just make sure that my Y has clearance. If you do control all and you hold your shift key down and then the arrow key, you can go up and down with your design and it stays in the same relative position on your X axis while it's just moving your Y axis. So, um, that's the best way to move the long designs within Glowforge is to make sure that you're doing it that way. So I would, we're gonna play pretend now, I would engrave the first piece. I have it lined up. I know that my material is long enough. It's all square along the crumb tray edge. My crumb tray is positioned and, and set in to the Glowforge correctly. There's no debris or anything. I will cut out my piece and then go and move the material up and just slide it through while it's still hugging the edge of that crumb tray. So this whole time that you're moving your material through, you're gonna be making sure that it's on the crumb tray. 
And then on the, um, when it comes time to then do your design in the Glowforge, we're gonna move the design up in the Glowforge interface. So we're not loading multiple files in and then trying to align the file. The file itself has all of the pieces it needs already lined up. If we look really closely here at our crumb tray, we have put little pieces of masking tape on the crumb tray to designate to us about where we want the tops of our materials to hit for a pass through. And so then when I'm lining up for my next cut, I've moved the wood up. Up here on the top, you should see just a little bit of the cut that you've already made. So then you would do control all and then slide up with the arrow key until your um, you've moved in your next section. So up here, I would then turn off and then turn on. Um, I went too far. So right about be right about here. This is a great demonstration of things that don't work. So then this next part is supposed to then activate and you use your activated line to line up on your unactivated line. And then you just keep going through like that. So I don't know why that piece right now is not working for us. But again, control shift and you move it up. And then this section should activate and so on and so forth. Um, so that's basically how I did it. It's not a very good demonstration because I'm not actually running one, but hopefully it helps with a couple of tips and I didn't want this video to be super duper long, so if you have questions, let me know. I obviously don't have all the answers all the time, um, but there's a lot of great users that can help you within the Glowforge user group and on the forum online too. So definitely feel free to ask questions.